Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. My name is Preston. Um, I'm the pastor here at First Baptist Church of Jasper, Georgia. I'd like to welcome you to this modified service of worship. If you are joining us for the first time, we are glad that you are here. This is week two um, of the new normal. Um, as we um, maneuver through this um, COVID-19 environment, um, we take this is and this has taken some getting used to. Um, this is, a, I imagine, uncomfortable for you as it is for me. I'm not as comfortable in front of the camera as you might have picked up already um, through these last two weeks. Um, but we're going to worship the um, best we can. Um, as I had a friend tell me when I was young, blessed are the flexible because they won't get bent out of shape. And so um, to go over just the flow of worship this morning, we're going to begin with prayer. Um, Anna will share some scripture with you um, and then have a message to our stu students. And then um, we'll, have a, we'll have a prayer, then a sermon, and then we'll finish up with an announcement. So um, now if you would join me in prayer, please. Gracious God, we give you thanks. For you are a mighty God. We give you thanks and praise for who you are, for how you love us, for how you walk beside us and forgive us and, and, and redeem us. God, um, help us to find your presence in the midst of, of this current time and place that we're in. God, we give you thanks for the blessings in our lives. God, we give you um, thanks for how you allow us to do church in different ways. God, um, we come with many burdens, many concerns, and we ask you to know, we ask to help us find your presence in the midst and help us how to be your people um, as people of faith, a people of love and compassion to one another. Amen. The scripture for this morning is from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind, so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen before him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept saying, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it in my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. The word of God for the people of God. At this time, I would like to have any Tiny Tots who are with us come join me for a children's sermon. Good morning, Preston. Good morning. I'm glad you're here for our children's sermon. Me too. Today, we have a special guest with us to learn what love looks like. Now, normally on Sunday morning, when we're all together, and we love someone, we have different ways of showing them. Mm. Sometimes it's with a handshake. Sometimes it's with a high five. Sometimes with a fist bump. And if we really love someone, we may give them a hug. But we can't show that kind of love right now. So we're gonna look at what love looks like right now. Now, this isn't normally how we do children's sermons. Normally, Preston, it's just a little too old to be in the children's sermon. Normally it's Molly Dunn and Weldon running up to sit on the front steps. But today we're at home. 
because what love looks like right now is staying at home and staying safe and love can look different. So this week, love may look like calling a loved one and telling them that you love them and checking on them, maybe calling your grandparents or your aunt and uncles, or love may look like doing extra chores around the house, even the ones we don't want to, because love looks different right now. But God's love is so big that it includes all the love that we show to each other. So while we may not be giving handshakes and high fives, we can love each other from our home. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you for all the wonderful technology that allows us to have children's sermons at home. Thank you for Mr. Preston and everyone at church that helps us learn what love looks like. Even if we're not together at church, we're still a family of faith that loves each other. Be with us this week until we come back together next week. In your sense, let me pray. Amen. As we walk through life, we often encounter situations that develop questions within us. And the disciples were walking along with Jesus in this passage. And they began to see a man who was blind. They must have known him because they knew that he had been blind since birth. And so they began to talk back and forth with one another, asking one another questions. What was the root of his blindness? Was it because he was born that way or because and he, or he, was, and he had sinned or because his parents had sinned? See, they were wrestling with two different views. This view, this fatalistic view that was within the Jewish culture that if you did something wrong, then God was punishing you in some way. Or there was this view that they had in Exodus 20 that they said the sins of a mother and father would pass on for third and fourth generations. So they go to Jesus and they say, Jesus, here's this man. Why is he blind? And Jesus looks at him and he blows their theological world and he says, Neither one is your, either, either it was the Exodus or if it was, he didn't sin either. And imagine how the disciples had heard this. Their core convictions had been thrown out the window. Some may have gotten frustrated. Some had gotten angry. Some may have gone, really? Because when someone pokes holes in what we think and proves to us that we're wrong, we, how do we respond? Imagine when our world um, begins to get unsettled. And the disciples were curious. They weren't trying to shame the man. They were asking a question, and which is good because they wanted to learn because faith is about asking questions, not just taking things at face value because someone says, believe it. And Jesus welcomed their question. He didn't shame them. He realized that they were wanting to learn. And Jesus, in a way, alluded to the brokenness that was in the world and how the kingdom of God is supposed to respond to this brokenness. Jesus used this opportunity, though, to move from questioning to responding. And this morning, in the past few weeks, we've had questions about this COVID-19 virus. How did it begin? Well, could there have been steps that could have been taken to slow this thing down? Some people ask, why are folks overreacting? Where some people are asking, why are folks not taking this serious enough? And then some are asking, how long are we going to have to deal with this? I mean, asking questions is good. It's how we learn, but it's how, but we have to be mindful of how much time and power we give to these questions. Because oftentimes we can become overwhelmed with these questions, some that we don't have answers for or control of, and we find ourselves getting frustrated and angry and confused. And sometimes our why questions, as good as they can be, may lead us to the unknown, even though we still may need to ask them. And Jesus may have had questions in his mind why this man was blind. In a world that God created that was good, Jesus was having to make room for brokenness. And I'm sure it might have been uncomfortable for him as it is for us. 
And as much as Jesus may have been saddened by this man's blindness, he begins to accept the reality and begins to consider how to thoughtfully respond. You know, accepting reality, accepting our situation is hard, especially when it's tragic, when it's unsettling, when it's challenging. And some of us go from the angle of just taking it as there must be a reason. Everything, there's a reason, and there's no questions. And that's the way that some deal and some cope with it. Because questioning is not a part of their DNA. They just don't want to go there. Maybe it's just too much work. And many of us start with questions because it's how we process. And it's process is where we find comfort. And the process can be for a short or for a long while. And whether we accept it at face value or begin to question, it's important not to get bogged down. That, you know, the disciples could have been easily stuck wrestling with this man's blindness if Jesus hadn't used that moment um, to respond to their question, but also to respond to the man. And how important it is to begin to think how we can begin to respond, to figure out how we're going to work through the inconvenience the pain and the struggle of our current setting. To, to not stay in reactive mode, angry mode, or inconvenience mode, or even questioning mode, that we find ways to thoughtfully respond to the brokenness as people of faith. Because our current reality is fear. Our current reality is scarcity and uncertainty. And the question is, when can we get back to normal? And we can spend all our time focusing on those things or we can begin to know how to maneuver through these things as people of faith, to be agents of the kingdom of God, of kindness, of compassion, and peace. So as we close this morning, we're going to close with a few announcements that Anna is going to be sharing with you. Here are a few announcements for this week. Our church staff and deacons are working on a ministry to serve those who may be at a higher risk and have to stay at home. We are looking for volunteers to make calls or to send cards to these members. And we're looking for volunteers who would be willing to buy groceries or pick up medication. If you are willing to do this, please let us know by calling or emailing the church office. And if you or someone you know is in need of this in our church family, please call or email us as well. We have sent out a link to D365, which is a daily devotional. It is new every morning with a prayer, scripture, and devotional for you. So while we cannot meet together, this is a resource for you to have. The church office is going to remain open at this time, so please call or email us if you need anything. For giving, you can still go to fbcjasper.com to give online, or you can mail in your tithe. Stay tuned for next week. We can't wait, cannot wait to reconnect with you.